What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension for architecture. So I'm continuing my series on extensions that have architectural applications inside of SketchUp. So in this series we talk about everything from extensions that create doors and windows to this extension which allows you to create real moving animations inside of SketchUp. So if you want links to more information about this extension and the others in this series, you can get them by downloading my architecture extensions guide at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So to start off, model credit for this particular model is, um, I'm not sure if I can say this quite right, it's the Parquet Yolik Co Zona 01 Los Oscos Asturias. Um, you can just search for this inside of the 3D warehouse. It's by Suso Redondo, and uh, you can download this and follow along. So that's going to be the model that I'm using for this particular video. So one of the things that's really nice about the base version of SketchUp is you can use it to animate your camera movement. So you can set up scenes like, uh, for example, I could add a scene right here and I can animate the transition between those scenes and so you can use this to create things like walkthrough animations and things like that it's really good for that kind of thing however um, one of the things that it can't do is it can't actually animate movement inside of your model so if you wanted these to spin or something like that you're really kind of out of luck without extensions however with the extension animator from Fredo 6 you can animate full movement inside of your SketchUp models so this can allow you to animate everything from moving vehicles to spinning turbines to opening doors and windows. And so that's one of the reasons that it makes the list for the best architectural extensions is it can really add something to your architectural animations. So no longer is it just uh, animating the transition between scenes, you can actually animate things moving, which really kind of opens up your possibilities. And so what I want to do is I want to show you how to use this to create an animation. One thing I will know is the only thing I've changed inside of this model is I double clicked in here and I grouped the uh, three rotor blades and the central piece into a single group so that just helps us animate these in a minute but what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to create an animation where these actually spin and so whenever you're getting started with animator the first thing you need to do is save your model so this won't work unless you've saved your model but then you can come in here and you can click on the button for the clip editor so the clip editor is going to pull up a couple different areas on the side of your screen so you've got your timeline off to the left so that's where you're going to manage your different animations across time and then there's also some utility functions in here you can name this um, as well as your play functions in here as well you can set your playback speed so these are all gonna have to do with the playback of your video and then over here on the right hand side this is where you're gonna insert your actual animation sequences so there's a number of different things that you can animate inside of this extension so you can animate movements cameras uh, visual effects there's kinematic constraints, which I haven't done anything with yet. I need to research that one a little bit more. But really, you're going to probably use the first two or three of these the most. And so let's use these to create a simple animation um, of these spinning. So what we're going to do is we're going to start and we need to insert a movement sequence onto our timeline. So we're going to click on this button right here and we're going to click on the button for new movement. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this to add a movement animation inside of our model. So you can see how when this, when you do this, you get a different menu on the top. And this gives you the option to create different kinds of animations. So you can see how as I mouse over these, I get a description of them. So translation is going to be movement. Screw is going to let something spin and also um, move. There's rotation, which you're going to rotate around a pivot point. There's also a spin, as well as scale, explosion, path, and then apparition, which will make something which will make something appear or disappear. In this case, we want to focus on the rotation. So what we want to do is we want to add a rotation animation. So we're going to click on this button right here, and then you can see how it tells us that we need to go select an object. So in this case, I'm going to click on this object, and you'll notice when you mouse over these, it actually highlights the things that you might be able to select. 
by doing this. So in this situation, we wanna mouse over this rotor blade, and this is actually going to show us the different parts and pieces in this rotor blade. So what this does is this will allow us to either go inside of this, so you can see how you could just animate one of the blades if you wanted to, or I'm gonna go with this overall that I created, which you can see how it highlights the entire blade here. So I'm gonna click on the button for blade, and so that's gonna select these objects, and that's gonna show us that these are the objects that we're going to be animating. And so now what we need to do is we need to set a couple different things. We need to set the point around which this is going to rotate, as well as the angle at which this is going to rotate. So in this particular situation, what I want to do is I want to mouse over this object. But first, one thing that makes this a lot easier is you can actually lock this to an axis. So you can see if I click on the X axis, this is gonna set my protractor to that axis. And we don't necessarily want this to be right here. What we want is we wanna set this on the Y axis. So the Y axis, you can see how that locks this to that green axis. So that means that this is now aligned so that we're gonna be perfectly um, rotating this around this point. And so the other thing I wanna do is I wanna move my mouse over this point right here, and I just wanna click on this. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna set my central point. And so now, you can see how it's acting a lot like the protractor tool inside of SketchUp. So I can just click once here and then move my mouse and you can see how I can set this rotation factor. Well, in this situation, I don't necessarily want to set this rotation factor this way. What I wanna do is I wanna click on this button right here and set my angle to 360 degrees. And so what that's gonna do is now if I zoom out and I click on the play button, that's gonna animate the rotation of these objects 360 degrees. So you can see how this is spinning all the way around. And note that for whatever reason, in this particular situation, this didn't pick up the central point. So the animation isn't picking up the center piece rotating. For right now, I'm just gonna kinda of leave that as is because I wanna give you more of an idea of the workflow than really getting into the weeds. But yes, I did see it, so you don't need to leave a comment and tell me that we didn't pick up the central piece inside of our animation. And so what we're gonna do now is you can see how when we click the play button, this is animating a rotation of 360 degrees around this central point. Every time I click on this, this plays this animation. You can see how this has a duration right now set to two seconds, meaning it's gonna take two seconds for this to spin 360 degrees. Now, if you wanted these to go a little bit slower, what you could do is you could change this duration to something like four seconds and then click the play button. Well, now it's gonna take these longer to spin 360 degrees. It'll take four seconds instead of two. So you can use this to set the speed of this particular rotation. In this case, I think I'm going to leave it at two seconds. And so once you have this set kind of the way that you want it to, you can go ahead and click on the button for save the sequence and exit. And you can see how what this is going to do is this is going to now pop this up as a little blue object on your timeline over here. So overall, if I click on this play button and I play my scene, you can see how my scene is now two seconds of this animation running right here. And so when you first get this back, it may look more like this. So you can see how you have this animation in here. Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna set this to repeat that animation because I want these to keep spinning. So in order to set something to repeat, you can come over here and click on the left-hand side um, where this clip is and you can adjust both the duration of this element. So if you wanted this to go slower, you could set this here. There's also an option in here to set the number of times this repeats. So you can see if I click this right arrow right here, this is adding multiple different versions of this. It's repeating it over and over again. So what I wanna do in this situation is I wanna set this to repeat four times. Well now, my overall video is gonna be 10 seconds long because this two second clip is playing once and then it's repeating repeating four times. So if I click at the play button now, you can see how this is gonna sit here and this is just gonna rotate for 10 seconds. So it's just gonna sit here and these blades are going to rotate over and over and over again. And so you can also set this to infinity. So a good example would be like a helicopter or something like that where you always want these to spin. You can set this to repeat to infinity and then this animation will repeat for as long as your video sequence is going. Um, and I'm not gonna get too far into these other options right now, but what we have now is we have this 10 second long clip where we have these rotating around 
just like this. And so now what I want to do is I want to add a camera transition. So what I want to do is I want to animate my camera so that it flies around these different uh, these different blades. And so remember how we inserted a movement sequence over here? Well now what we want to do is we want to insert a camera. And you can see how right now if I mouse over this, it says that it'll insert a camera in the timeline at 10 seconds. Well I don't want this to be at 10 seconds, I want this to be inserted at 0 seconds. So I'm just going to click over here on 0 to set my current time to 0 seconds. And so now what we're going to do, and there's a few different ways to do this, but the way that we're going to do this is we're just going to add a new camera by clicking right here. You can see how this gives us a few different options. So you can actually set this to track an object in your animation if you want to. In this case, I don't really want to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this so that it starts an animation right here and it flies all the way around these rotors. So in order to do that, I'm going to start by capturing this first camera view. So I just rotate around to this view click on the button for capture, and then I click on the button for save the sequence and exit. And you can see how what this does is this adds a little green dot right here, or a green symbol. This indicates that there's a camera view right here. So this is one camera view. Well now, what I wanna do is I wanna click on two seconds, and I wanna click on the button to insert camera, and we're gonna insert a second camera view that's over here. So at two seconds, my camera is going to be right here, and we're just going to click on the button for capture current view again. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fly all the way around this view, inserting different camera views. So at four seconds, we're going to be right here. We're going to add one at six seconds. It's going to be right here. And then at eight seconds, what I want to do is I want to click on this view, I want to click on the button for copy, then I want to right click down here and click on the button for paste. And so what that did is that copied this first camera view down here. So now I have the camera view starting right here. And as we move through our timeliner, you can see how what this is going to do, or our timeline, is this is going to animate the transition between those different cameras. So now if I click the play button, you can see how what this is doing is this is animating my camera transition all the way around here. So you can see how what this did is now we have this camera view flying around these um, over a duration of about 10 seconds. And you can come in here and kind of play around with this. I feel like this gets a little bit fast here at the end. So one thing I might do is I might take these cameras and set them so that they're actually, so, so that this clip is maybe twice as long or maybe set this where um, I don't go quite as far in this amount of time to kind of slow this down. So that's another option for a way that you might do this. But let's go ahead and call this good for right now. So we have our camera flying around and we have it orbiting our spinning turbine blades. Well now what we want to do is we want to export this to a video. So we have this all set up. We've got it the way that we want it. Now we can click on this button right here to export this or generate a video from this. And so when you first pull this up, one thing you may notice is that um, this may look a little bit different to you if you haven't loaded in this FFmpeg um, codec. So this is something you need to load in that gives this the ability to stitch all of those images together into the different kinds of videos that are shown on here. So there should be some instructions in here on where to download that and how to put that in here. If I recall correctly, I believe that you need to download this to your computer and then tell it where to find the file that you downloaded. It's been a while since I did that, but there should be instructions right here. And then once you get that set up, you'll have the option to export this to multiple different videos types. So in this situation, I want to set this to an MP4. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this turbine animation. So you can see how there's a number of different options down here. Just note that when you change things like your frame rate, that means this is going to export more frames and you'll get a smoother animation, but this will also take longer because basically what this is doing is exporting a number of different individual frames and uh, then stitching them together into a video. And so the other thing is you can set this to whatever you want your um, resolution to be. So in this case, maybe 1920 by 1080 or something like that. So um, 
and then in order to test that you can click on the button for test image and so what that's going to do is that's going to pop up a preview of how big that's going to be um, that you can kind of look at and make sure that it does what you want it to do so that test image will let you test that and so once you have all of this set up the way that you want so you can see how this is gen going to generate 301 frames you can click on the button for generate video so when you click on the button for generate video, what that's going to do is that's going to go out and that's going to export each one of these individual frames um, of your animation. It's going to export that and uh, then it's going to take all of those separate images and it's going to stitch them together into a single video. So in this situation, what it's going to do is it's going to export 301 images and then it's going to stitch them together. So we'll come back at the end of this sequence and you can see what this ends up looking like when you do this. All right, and so uh, when it goes through and it finishes up your video, you're going to get a screen that looks something like this. Notice that I did go through and I re-ran this. Uh, I made the video a little bit longer, so I just kind of re-spaced out my camera views um, just because the camera transition was really fast. But you're going to get something that looks kind of like this, and you can see how there's a couple different options in here for opening your folder or if this actually exported videos, you can just click on the play button in order to open that video up. And so when I open that video up, you can see how as I max maximize this, this is what my video ends up looking like. So you can see how it's got the transition between those different camera views, but you're able to animate both the camera view and the moving objects inside of SketchUp. So once you kind of build on the fundamentals, um, kind of like we did in this video, you can really make videos of whatever you want using this extension. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you like this extension? Have you used it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.